Hi guys, welcome to today's video. In today's video, we will be continuing our alternate future of the Balkans series. And we will start by looking at the treaty after the Third World War. So we will start with the treaty with Greece. As they were the first one to formally, formally capitulate. Also, before we begin, I want we're at 377 subscribers. Our goal is 400 by the end of this month, so please subscribe. I think we'll get there early. As we're only 23 away from our goal. Now, that's exciting. So please subscribe. Macedonia from Greece lands. Bulgaria gains some of Thrace. Turkey gains some of Thrace. And they're getting pretty big. Albania gains a bit of land. Turkey gains this. Most of the Aegean islands that changed is in Turkey's hands. Bulgaria still doesn't like Turkey, say, because Turkey still has land, so they think are theirs. Yep, exactly. Because remember, they annexed a bunch of earlier in the series. So they had an earlier war, which was known as a partition of Bulgaria. Although it wasn't a full-on partition, it partitioned most of it. And then Turkey is out because they have no treaties left to sign. Except they need to annex that island. Greece is still going to be... Greece is going to have a few demilitarized zones that I didn't show yet. Because I didn't know what I would do with them. So yeah, let's get a smaller brush. This is going to be a demilitarized zone. Might not... It's going to be that big. That's pretty big. And another one here, as well as restricted militaries to less than 100,000 men. They have to pay 400 billion in war reparations over the next three years. Which is partially due by them being an aggressor. And then they let's move on to another treaty. Okay, now it's Serbia's turn to go to the treaty negotiating table. But that being all they had left when they formally, form, formally capitulated. And yeah. And so let's see their treaty. Most of its borders are with who they attack, but Romania's border is still unmilitarized. Though... Their army is restricted to 150,000 men. Mostly because they could be attacked by multiple nations. Which was part of the negotiations went. And another thing is, they have to pay 300 billion in war reparations to all affected. Not 300 billion to everyone, but they pay 300 billion and it goes to everyone affected. Much like Greece's 200 billion, 400 billion. Now let's go to Romania, the most powerful nation on the team. How will they do? Will they succeed in this treaty or not? Will they suffer more or not? And nations that aren't going to be affected by treaties, I think we're in this pact. The Zagreb pact. A few nations will probably join it after the treaty. Hungary still got some negotiating left to do. And I don't think... Montenegro wasn't a part of it. Neither was Kosovo or Macedonia. I don't think a part of that pact. They may have been a part of it, but I don't think they were. I can't recall. So, yeah. And then there'll probably be an event or two after the treaty. Just to see how it's stabilizing. Yeah, there's more than just that, as there's also, they have to pay a trillion in war reparations over the next 10 years. And they, and it gets further, their military is restricted to 300,000 men. And, well, they can't have a navy larger than 50 foul. So, yeah, not a big navy. But, it says nothing about a lot of stuff. And so let's see who wants to join this pact now with Austria. The Zagreb pact expands with Hungary thing joining Bulgaria and you guessed it. Vojvodina with this happening. With Albania annexing Kosovo and due to being upset 
they decide to trigger a war. Nobody intervenes, so they don't see this as that big of a deal, them invading Montenegro. But still, the Zagreb Pact, a bit unease about this, will probably send something in, like peacekeeping forces in the way of that. Because they don't want to be attacked, maybe. As they tell, as Bosnia and Croatia have a secret meeting in Sarajevo, in Bosnia, right? Secret meeting about this situation. Nobody knows what's said. Nobody knows what happens. Nobody knows what goes on. But a few days later, to the surprise of many, except Montenegro and friends, well, they march in peacekeeping forces. Even though the, many people have been warning about this. With Montenegro just just calling this wrong. As they claim it's a partition of them. And well, yeah. Probably is. As Montenegro has no breaths left. Secret plan with its allies and ask for support or them to allow them which the lions meet secretly in budapest everybody meets there secretly nobody knows what's said but you can know what's said. so basically they're talking about how it's best to kick turkey back in thrace what's the best move and well they come up with the idea they should just put troops so bulgaria mobilizes fifty thousand men and have about a hundred thousand waiting with with the other nations sending about a hundred thousand troops to help them and bulgaria is still moving more and more so they're at about two hundred thousand men now as they sent fifty thousand more in bulgaria did and their troops are now at one fifteen thousand as the other a hundred thousand troops finally arrive and they're all moved to the front line and well then croat then Bulgaria and allies strike the Turkish Empire. Because they can. Why else? Is there any other reason? Nope. Well, the declaration of war did not come right away, guys. It came about a week after the fighting began. And let's go through the fighting before the declaration of war. As Bulgaria marches in troops, as it feels that it should, as is not right, but they still do, Turkey holds fierce resistance. But some Bulgarians do help them move forward. Now, Turkey's military now having about a lot of troops, with Bulgaria rapidly increasing their numbers. As we send 100,000 more to the front line, so we're at 350,000 troops. And, well, fierce tur Turkish resistance yields little results against Bulgaria's high morale. Well, as they have a big breakthrough. And, well, yeah. But fierce Turkish resistance pushes them north a bit. With a huge counter-offensive launched by Turkey. But Bulgaria launches a huge offensive here. It yields huge results. But this wasn't the actual counter-offensive. Turkey moved all the troops up there thinking that was that counter-offense. When really, this was. And yeah. With this huge pocket of Turkish fighters being about, let's say, 250,000 men. So now they their troops are getting up near 600,000. And also, remember, their allies are also sending troops, so they're all dressed up like Bulgarian troops. With Bulgaria using its navy to island hop a few islands, which go really well. And yeah. 
With Turkey on the verge of being ready to surrender for the Thrice War. As they reach the gates of Istanbul, Turkey uses about a few thousand men to try and push it back. These men are really nationalistic towards Turkey. And while they push back as far as they can, as they will do anything, but unfortunately their effort wasn't enough. And, well... Turkey is in trouble as, well, they're about to be kicked out of Europe. And they march into the city of Istanbul. Yep, they do. They lead in, they continue, then they walk through, they continue in. They take the city and Turkey is forced to survive. now, with many wars already happening, including the Third Balkan War. Bulgarian and Albanian wars of expansion, like the Thrace War and the Albanian War of Expansion in the Thrace War. And while these wars yield a lot of results, but they didn't get much, as much as the Third Balkan War, but some nations are starting to see different threats. As Romania, Serbia, and Greece are not the threats anymore. The real threat has become who was the defenders. So I guess more power led them to crave more power, which created a bad world for the rest. Because some countries, like a lot of that treaty was Bulgaria. And look at Bulgaria trying to expand. Or how about Albania? Unified with Kosovo, invades Montenegro after freeing the rest of Kosovo. They just want more power is what it looks like to me. And so... A little bit of power leads to the urge for more power, and the urge for power can lead to bigger conflicts and worse situations. So hopefully that's not what's happening, but I think it is because there would be no entertainment if nothing happened. So thank you very much for watching this video, as that is well appreciated. Thank you for liking and subscribing, as that's also well appreciated. And that's all for today's video. Please like, subscribe, comment, get us to 400 subscribers before May 1st. That's all for today's video. Wild Mapper out.